Welcome to Arithmetic Fundamentals Whole Numbers Part 2 video. Part 2 of the video covers factors and divisors, multiples and the lowest common multiple. Factors and multiples come from an area in math called number theory. In the section on fractions, we will use these concepts to reduce fractions and come up with common denominators for fractions. Our H free prime calculator has built in functions to deal with these concepts. As we see from this screen, there is an I factor, an I factor, and an is prime. There are L, GCD, IGCD, GCD factors also. We can get at these through the toolbox key, and there's two ways to come up with them in the toolbox key. One way is to use the catalog. The other way is to use the soft key CAS. If we go back to this section getting started, we talked about our calculator being two different calculators, the home calculator and the computer algebra system calculator. The computer algebra system calculator is normally used for algebra in higher areas. Although we have these functions that are useful in the home key. So therefore, historically, when the calculator was first built, they used the CAS period and another method to designate functions that were designed for CAS, but could also be used in the home area. Today, you can just to these without the CAS through the catalog. Let's talk about the calculator interface before we talk about how the functions actually work. So if we go to the CAS version of the calculator, hit our toolbox key, go to the integer function, and go to factor list, we see we come up with the same uh, function name that we have here. If we go back to the home key, then we come up with the I factor name without the CAS. In fact, if we put in a 15 and press enter, we get the same answer that we got with the CAS function. So this is actually a third way that we can get to these besides using the catalog function. Let's take a look at the catalog function to come up with I factor. So we'll hit our toolbox. We were in CAS, so we'll switch over to catalog with the soft key. Then we'll press I to get to our I. So I is under tangent. So we press I and we got to it. Then we want to get to I factor, so these are in alphabetical order. So we'll scroll until we get to the I factor command. We see that we both have I factors and I factors all at the same place. So we'll hit I factor and then we'll type in for the I factor the 15 and we'll press enter and we'll come up with the same thing that we did with CAS. So again, this is three different methods for coming up with the, the functions that we are using on this page. There is one more detail we need to pay attention to. So let's go back to our toolbox, go back to CAS, go to integer. When we hit integer, we have the prime command, we have factor list, we have factors that we're going to use. So the names are not identical to the names that we have here. They're a description of what we have. What happens is in the setup, you can set this so it either gives you the exact name or it gives you the description. So this is another detail. So when we go to prime, we have the flyout method and we have the thing to test this of a prime. So this is when we press this, it's going to give us the is prime command. Again, since we're in the home team, it's going to put a CAS on here. The other comment that we should make is that all these um, function names have I's in front of them. The reason they have I's in front of them is the calculator is using integer. What integer means is you have the whole numbers 
which are zero and the counting numbers, if we take the opposite of the counting numbers, which are one going up, then we come up with negative numbers. So the combination of negative, zero, and counting numbers are equal to the integers. So that's why there's an I in the front because they also work with negative numbers. These functions make it easy to deal with the concepts. So the first concept that I talk about is the factors. So when we bring up the I factors of 15, this says that there's one three and there's one five. For example, if we look up the I factors of 12 in this area here, we see that there are two twos and one three. If we call up the I factor of 12, it says two to the second power times three, so that this is showing the two as the exponent and the exponent would be a one, so there wouldn't be any. So up here, going back to 15, then there's one three and one five. So when we call up this I factor function, we just end up with three times five. So when we check to see if a, a number is prime, we just put it in. Remember uh, in our earlier video, we talked about true being the Boolean one. Here, when we talk about is prime 21, we get the Boolean zero, which is false. So the factors of five are five and one, and the um, I factor of 21 is three times seven. So it's a little bit difficult to keep track of which one is which. If we just type it and put the numbers in, then we can examine it. We might also mention that when we go to our toolbox and we look under integer and we see factors and factor list, this is a little bit confusing too because the factor list is the actual one with the S. The one with factors is the one without the S. So it's kind of confusing to our brain um, that these are almost backwards. But again, remember our calculator is set to describe what's going on, not the actual functions. Let's take a look at the other definitions on the screen. A number composed of other factors than itself and one is a composite number. So we can use these functions to come up with composite numbers. When all the factors of a number are prime factors, they are called the prime factors of the number. So whenever we use the I factor or the I factors, it always writes these in terms of prime factor. To find the greatest common divisor of a number, there are a number of places if we go to the catalog. We can find this under IGCD, we can find this under LGCD, we can find this under GCTD. So there's all kinds of different places we can find this under the catalog, and there's different places we can find this under the toolbox option. To do this manually, we take the numbers that we have and do uh, upside down division. So we start with two and then take two into all three of these numbers. We notice that the answers all end in five or zero. So therefore we take five and come up with the answer. Five goes into 45, nine, five goes into 60, 12, five goes into 105, 21. Then we see the divisibility test for three is if the sum of the digits is divisible by three. These are actually all uh, multiplication facts for three. So then we end up with three, four, and seven. And since at this point, we're down to the only factors that divide into all three of these are the two, five, and three. So therefore, these are prime factors. So then these numbers here, the GCD turned out to be 30. So if we take this 30 and take the I factor of it, we get two, three, and five. So this is a way we can come up with two, three, and five versus doing it manually with the upside down division. This ends our discussion of factors and divisors. We have switched to the multiple LCM page. Let's clear our calculator before going on. Remember when there's something in the command line, we press the escape key to clear the thing in the history. We need to clear it. So we press the shift clear to clear out the calculator. 
on the last page, we discussed using the CAS before the function name. So let's take a quick look at that. Hit the toolbox, hit CAS, then go to integer, and it says divisor. So the divisor one will give the is divisible function. So let's escape out of this. The last answer was given in matrix form, not list form. So what we want to do is we want to change this matrix, which is given with brackets, to braces. So we need to use the matrix to list function. To find the matrix to list function, we'll go back to our calculator. We'll hit the toolbox key. We'll go to catalog. We'll press the M button to take us to the uh, M. We'll scroll until we find the matrix to list function. So we press this one. Again, let's take a look at help whenever we're looking at a new function. So the help function here returns a list containing elements of the given matrix. So it will take a matrix and switch it over to a list form. Now matrix can have the form of multiple rows or multiple columns. So that's what's being demonstrated here. In our case, we only have a singular row. So we'll pre press OK. So we have this command. Go up here, copy it, and press Enter. And now we have the thing with commas, and we switch from brackets to braces. Matrix operations have all kinds of rules. So when we take 6 divided by this matrix, we get an error. But when we take 6 divided by this list, we take 6 divided by 1 to be 6, 6 divided by 2 to be 3, 6 divided by 3 to be 2, and 6 divided by 6 to be 1. So it's much better for us to convert this over to a list format. On our calculator, let's take 6 and divide, and divide it by the list. So we'll, we'll highlight this, we'll copy, and then we'll press Enter. So therefore, 6 is a multiple of 6. 6 times 1 is 6. 3, 3 times 2 is 6. 2, 2 times 3 is 6. 1, 1 times 6 is 6. So therefore, 6 is a multiple of all of these numbers. Let's take a look at common multiples. The first thing we want to do is clear our calculator. So we need to clear the history area. Let's look at the operations in our calculator. To get the I factor, we're going to hit the toolbox. We're going to go to CAS. We're going to go to integer. And we're going to pick the factors. So this is going to give us the I factor command. So we'll put in 12. Then we want to take 12 and we want to divide it and we want to create a list. So to create the list, we're going to hit the shift and list. We're going to type in two comma three press enter and get the answer to be 6 and 4. To take the LCM of 2 and 3, we're going to hit our toolbox. We're going to go to integer and then LCM. We'll put in 2, comma, 3 and press enter and get the answer to be 6. Then to do the I factors, we're going to go to our toolbox. Go to go to integer, and we're going to go to factor list. Gives us the I factor command. We need to put in a list to get these out. So we'll do the list operation. We'll put in 60, comma, 90, press enter and get the list for 60 and get the list for 90. We need to compile these two lists together, the 60 and the 90 list. So for twos, we need two and we need one. 
so we need two of them. For three, we need one, and we need two, so we'll need two of them. For five, we need one, and we need one, so we'll need one of them. So we want to enter this number into our calculator. We can use either the square or the power key. So since they're both square, we will use the square key. We will hit two, then the square key, then we'll need to take it times, and then the three and the square key, and then we'll need to take it times, five, and we'll press enter. We can also take the LCM of 60 and 90 to get, this, to get the same answer. So we'll hit our catalog, we'll hit integer, LCM, type in 60, comma, 90, press enter. Notice we come up with the same answer. We use our calculator screens to come up with these definitions. A number that each of two or more numbers will exactly divide is called a common multiple of them. The least number that each of two or more numbers will exactly divide is called their least common multiple. So these are the two different things that we have demonstrated with our calculator screen. This concludes Arithmetic Fundamentals Whole Numbers Part 2.